Hello everyone, today I'm going to be starting my series regarding microbiology. Everything that I will cover in this series most likely will be in close relation to your college microbiology course. So without further ado, let's get started. Part 1, The Important People of Microbiology. So the first person we're going to talk about today is going to be Anton von Lohenhoek. He was a Dutch tradesman and scientist best known for his work on the development and improvement of the microscope, and also for his subsequent contribution toward the study of microbiology. So the first thing we're going to talk about here about him is going to be the light microscope. So the light microscope was basic in design. Von Lohenhoek's instrument consisted of simple, powerful magnifying glasses rather than the compound microscopes or microscopes using more than one lens of the type today or in Zacharias Janssen's original microscope design. Compared to a modern microscope, Von Lohenhoek's design is extremely simple. Using a simple lens mounted in a tiny hole and a brass plate that makes up the body of the instrument. The specimen was then mounted on a sharp point that sticks up in front of the lens. Its position and focus could be adjusted by turning two screws. The entire instrument was only 3 to 4 inches long and had to be held up close to the eye, requiring good lighting and great patience to use. Next we're going to go to Francisco Reddy. So Francisco Reddy was an Italian physician and poet who demonstrated that the presence of maggots in putrefying meat does not result from spontaneous generation but from eggs laid on the meat by flies. So let's talk a little bit about spontaneous generation. So spontaneous generation is the hypothetical process by which living organisms develop from non-living matter. Also the archaic theory that utilizes this process to explain the origin of life. According to his theory, pieces of cheese and bread wrapped in rags and left in a dark corner, for example, were thus thought to produce mice. Because after several weeks there were mice in the rags, many believed in spontaneous generation because it explained such random occurrences as the appearance of maggots on decaying meat. So Francisco Reddy pretty much disproved this by doing this simple experiment here. So down below I have a picture depicting Francisco Reddy's experiment. And so we have three jars here at the very bottom. And each jar has a piece of meat. So the first jar is open so our flies could come in, lay their eggs, and then the, and the eggs would hatch into maggots. The second is the gauze covered jar. So no flies enter but they lay their eggs on the gauze that hatched maggots or eggs fell through the gauze and hatched on the meat. So both of these uh, on the left, um, you know, I guess still proved spontaneous generation. But what he did to, I guess, further the experiment, he had a third jar and this jar was completely sealed. In this way, no flies, maggots, or eggs could enter the jar, thus disproving spontaneous generation. Next, we're going to talk about Edward Jenner. So Edward Jenner was an English physician and scientist who was the pioneer of smallpox vaccine, the world's first vaccine. The terms vaccine and vaccination are derived from variole vaccinae, the term devised by Jenner to denote cowpox. In 1796, he carried out his famous experiment on eight-year-old James Phippus. Jenner inserted pus taken from a cowpox pustule and inserted it on an incision on the boy's arm. He was testing his theory, drawn from the folklore of the countryside that milkmaids who suffered the mild disease of cowpox never contracted smallpox, one of the greatest killers of the period, particularly among children. Jenner subsequently proved, having been inoculated with cowpox, Phipps was immune to smallpox. He submitted a paper to the Royal Society in 1797 describing his experiment, but was told that his ideas were too revolutionary and that he needed more proof. Undaunted, Jenner experimented on several other children, including his own 11-month-year-old son. In 1798, the results were finally published, and Jenner coined the word vaccine from the Latin vacae for cow. Florence Nightingale was an English social reformer and statistician, and the founder of modern nursing. She came to prominence while serving as a manager of nurses trained by her during the Crimean War, where she organized attending to wounded soldiers. She gave nursing a highly favorable reputation and became an icon of Victorian culture, especially in the persona of the Lady with the Lamp, making rounds of wounded soldiers at night. Her major contribution to microbiology was that sanitation shows statistical correlation with mortality. In other words, wash your hands before you go to the next patient. Next is Louis Pasteur. He was a French biologist, microbiologist, and chemist, most renowned for his discoveries of the principles of vaccination, microbial fermentation, and pasteurization. He is best known to the general public for his invention 
of the technique of treating milk and wine to stop bacterial contamination, a process now called pasteurization. He is regarded as one of the three main founders of bacteriology, together with Ferdinand Kong and Robert Koch, and is popularly known as the father of microbiology. Fleming, Flory, and Chain Alexander Fleming was a Scottish biologist who published extensively in several fields, including bacteriology, immunology, and chemotherapy. He is most well known for the discovery of the first antibiotic, penicillin, but interestingly enough, he had little to do with actually getting the substance mass-produced for human use. Like I said, penicillin was discovered by Alexander Fleming, but it wasn't until Howard Florida and Ernst Chain came across Fleming's research that the first antibiotic was mass-produced. Next, we're going to be talking about Joshua Lederberg, Edward Tatum, and George Beadle. I didn't have a whole lot of information on all three of these, but I did find some on Joshua Lederberg. So Joshua Lederberg was an American molecular biologist known for his work in microbial genetics, artificial intelligence, and the United States Space Program. He was 33 years old when he won the 1958 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for discovering that bacteria can mate and exchange genes, also known as bacterial conjugation. He shared this prize with Edward Tatum and George Beadle, who won for their work with genetics. Next is Franklin and Wilkins. So Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin, together with Ray Gosling, Alex Stokes, and Herbert Wilson, and other colleagues at the Randall Institutes at King's College, made crucial contributions to the discovery of DNA structure in 1953. Wilkins began using optical spectroscopy to study DNA in the late 1940s. In 1950, he and Gosling obtained the first clearly crystalline X-ray diffraction patterns from DNA fibers. Alex Stokes suggested that the patterns indicated that DNA was helical in structure. The discovery of the structure of DNA in 1953 revealed the physical and chemical basis of how structures are passed down through the generations and how they are expressed in individual organisms. Lastly is Thomas Brock. Now Thomas Brock is an American microbiologist known for his discovery of hypothermophiles living in hot springs at Yellowstone National Park. In the late 1960s, Brock discovered high temperature bacteria living in the Great Fountain region of Yellowstone. And with his colleagues Hudson Freeze, which I think is very ironic, they isolated a sample they named Thermus aquaticus, which means life at high temperatures. A 1967 article summarizing his research was published in the journal Science and led to the study of extremophiles, or organisms that live in extreme environments. By 1976, Thermus aquaticus was found useful for artificially amplifying DNA segments. Brock's discoveries led to great progress in biology, contributed to new developments in medicine, agriculture, and help create the new field of biotechnology. Thank you so much for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and comment down below if you have any questions. And again, thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a good one.